every cycle we get to this point, you could call it the quiet before the storm when it's super obvious what's coming, but everybody's still just straight sleeping on crypto. And this time around in 2024, it's maybe even more apparent that as a sort of fractal within that pattern, even the people already in crypto are sleeping so hard on Cardano. But honestly, from my perspective, that's probably a good thing. If you have never slept in a bed in the middle of the forest wearing a suit, or if you're finding value in these videos, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool, ticker AOS. Right now, if you spend any amount of time at all on the old Cardano interwebs, you are probably running into a pretty significant dose of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The important thing to remember though, is that this happens every damn cycle. And it's not just Cardano, it's all of crypto. Every single cycle, right at about this point, right when the people who've been around for a while kind of know what's about to happen, but it hasn't quite happened yet. This is always that point when everybody starts questioning everything about crypto generally, even, even Bitcoin. Even in Bitcoin, there are people who have been in crypto a long time and maybe maybe are only focused on Bitcoin. Even some of those people, you'll see them at this point in the cycle, wondering aloud, will we ever achieve the adoption we dreamed of? Will any significant chunk of the world ever embrace Bitcoin? Will it ever, ever embrace crypto? And you see this in every single ecosystem. Cardano is not alone. And maybe it's even intensified a little bit for us in Cardano, because let's face it, we're the black sheep of the large cap cryptocurrencies, because we're not Bitcoin, and yet we're also not a part of the EVM world. And we're definitely not a part of the VC crypto world. So we're kind of there standing on our own. We're this, this uh, unusual UTXO blockchain that has smart contracts, that refuse to go down the VC road. So we're very unique inside crypto and people don't like it when you are unique. I think in the crypto world, the the old saying, the, the nail that sticks up gets hammered down. That's definitely something they try to, they try to exercise against Cardano. That phenomenon definitely happens to Cardano, but we're very res resilient. We're definitely not the kind of nail that you can hammer down. But we're also not unaffected by all this. Even people who are very ardent fans of Cardano, even some of them, you'll see them on the Cardano social media, you know, platforms, basically saying, I just, I just feel like we're not making very much progress and everyone's so mean to us. Maybe, maybe Cardano, I don't know. I don't feel very good about they're basically just scared they're scared because crypto is so tribalistic everybody is saying bad things about every other ecosystem and then you got you know big parts of the legacy traditional system who are saying bad things about crypto in general and then you've got the the promise of cardano that I hope will always be on the horizon. What I mean by that is I think everybody who's involved in, in Cardano looks at the technology and they see the many, many ways in which the Cardano technology stack and not just the technology stack, but also the community and the ecosystem are highly superior. There are many ways in which our ecosystem is highly superior to other crypto ecosystems. I wouldn't say we're, we're superior in every single way, but there are many, many great things about the Cardano ecosystem. We excel at a lot of things and the world really hasn't been able to see those things yet. 
I personally hope that that's always on the horizon. I hope that's always in the future. But there are some, and I'll talk about why in just a second, but there are some really big things coming up that the world definitely hasn't seen yet because not even us in Cardano have seen yet. And we've talked about some of them over the last couple of days. We've got things like Ouroboros Laos coming which will bring us input endorsers, which is an innovative scaling solution, the likes of which Cardano has never seen before. And arguably, none of the large cap crypto blockchains have seen before. This is going to be a, at least the way it's been the way it's been promised to us. It sounds at least like this is going to be an unbelievable scaling solution for Cardano. I don't like to kill my, my chicks until they're hatched. So I'll wait until this thing's actually launched to pass judgment on it, but it's sounding like this is going to be a phenomenal way to scale Cardano. We've also got Voltaire coming, which is real decentralized on-chain governance for Cardano. This is also something completely innovative among the large cap blockchains. You don't have this in Bitcoin. You don't have this in Ethereum. You've got some, you know, you've got some consensus going on among validators. You know, should we all move to this new, you know, node version? Basically, it's like the validators move or they don't. And if they don't move, then you end up, you know, or if some of them move, you end up with this kind of split, like the one between, um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin. Um, so the, there, you you can argue there's some type of you know community input into the development of the ecosystem going on in those ecosystems through the consensus of the validators, but it's not the same as full on decentralized governance like we're moving to with Voltaire. And in my humble opinion. If you're in crypto, you should be trying to be as decentralized as possible. And if you're not even striving to move toward full-on on-chain decentralized governance, you're not really striving for decentralization and you're not really doing crypto right. You're not really doing the crypto thing if you're not moving toward that. In my humble opinion, many others would disagree with me, but I think this is an important thing that is defining of true cryptocurrency blockchains. If you're not at least trying to get to decentralized governance, I don't think you're really doing the decentralized crypto thing. That's probably a full discussion for another day. Those are things that go toward the philosophical fundamentals of crypto. But there's something else coming up that's far more practical, and it's this. The big complaint against Cardano among influencers, social media personalities, just crypto people in general, the big complaint against Cardano has always been that Haskell is too hard to program smart contracts and dApps in Cardano. The perception was you needed Plutus and that meant you meant Haskell and no developers want to learn Haskell. Basically, this is the perception out there. And largely it's true. I think all of us in, in Cardano would say there are some caveats there. We do have Aiken. There are easier ways. We're developing better languages that are far more adoptable maybe than than the Haskell-based Plutus. But I think there's a pretty big difference between a lot of the things we've had available for developers in the past and the thing that Midnight will bring, and that is TypeScript. We talked about this in the past. We did a whole big video about the, the advantages of having TypeScript available on Midnight once Midnight launches. But you can test this out for yourself. If you know any developers, if you know any developers, go ask them, hey, would you be more willing to learn TypeScript in the next couple of years or Haskell? If they're not already in functional programming, they are going to be very, very likely to say that they will happily engage in TypeScript over Haskell. As always with any new development in crypto, there's no way to know how successful Midnight is actually going to be until it launches we're not really going to know how successful Midnight will be. But 
if they were trying to pick a more accessible language, I think they went in the perfect direction with TypeScript and TypeScript and Midnight. Now that big complaint against Cardano basically totally goes away. Sure, sure, people will still repeat the same thing for like five years. There will be influencers on YouTube talking about how Cardano will never get anywhere because you have to know Haskell to develop anything anywhere in the Cardano ecosystem. They'll still be saying that in like five years, even if there are thousands of dApps running on midnight. I'm not saying there will be, but there could be. And TypeScript isn't the only advantage of midnight. I think people are also sleeping on the fact that we are definitely entering into an era of heightened regulation of crypto. KYC and things like that, as much as that's a dirty word in crypto, as much as we hate to even talk about KYC, those things are going to be happening. If there's anything financially going on and you are, you know, using US regulated banks as an on ramp or an off ramp, there's probably going to be a lot more KYC going on in any of those kind of financial things going on in crypto. The beautiful thing about Midnight, and people are sleeping on this probably as much as they're sleeping on the value going forward of TypeScript, is that Midnight is this beautiful combination, at least the way it's been the way it's been pitched to us. It seems to be a beautiful combination of regulatorily compliant privacy, meaning apparently midnight can do all of the regulatory stuff all the kyc stuff when you when you need to prove that you are a us person or an eu person or you know a citizen of japan or south korea or wherever just not one of the sanctioned countries midnight can do that but at the same time it can also do the privacy thing if the privacy thing is preferable or in areas where it's allowable because we do have certain times when we're dealing with, you know, regulated financial institutions as on ramps and off ramps. There are going to be certain times when we are going to have to do things like KYC that we don't want to do. But that doesn't mean that there won't also be times when we want certain other things to remain private. Midnight can do that. Again, I don't know how successful Midnight will be. We, I don't think anyone will really know until it launches. Probably for a couple of years after it launches, we don't know what kind of adoption it's going to achieve. But I think people are really sleeping on the value of of uh, some of these some of these attributes of Midnight TypeScript, much more accessible than anything we've had in the past. Basically, then you've got this very forward looking combination of privacy and regulatory compliance that midnight seems to be aimed at i think this could be a very potent combination and honestly i know it seems in crypto in general and especially in cardano it seems like there's always something on the horizon there's always some new development we're working toward that's always been the case in crypto and especially in cardano i hope it's always that way i hope we always have something on the horizon because as much as people mention, is this blockchain dead? Is that blockchain dead? You really are dead if you don't have anything to look forward to in the future. Some people would argue this about Bitcoin today. They would say, Bitcoin doesn't have much to look forward to. You know, occasionally there's some kind of, you know, involuntary technological progress in Bitcoin, like ordinals, that kind of thing that just sort of pop out of nowhere and, you know, half the people are opposed to but the only thing they have to look forward to is kind of more adoption there's no sort of planned coordinated technological progression going on i hope in cardano we always have something on the horizon we're always making some kind of progress because the other scenario is stagnation but honestly, people are sleeping so hard on this. The big complaint against us has always been that developers would not adopt Haskell. That has been the big complaint against Cardano all along. It's been the adoption thing, and Haskell has been the linchpin to that argument against us. That all goes away with Midnight, and people are sleeping so hard on it. It's going to be... I can't wait. I can't wait for midnight to become a thing to see 
what, what impact that has. Meanwhile, things are not looking so rosy for our competitors. If their big argument against us is the Haskell thing, the big argument they have for themselves is the volume thing. Look at our volume. Look at the usage. Look at the fees we're collecting. They're so proud to talk about their fees. Meanwhile, this is what Visa has to say about their volume. 90% of Ethereum, Tron, Solana stablecoin transactions are inorganic activity. Visa is saying that is not organic activity. And this is the kind of complaint that's been leveled against at least one of these ecosystems very often in the past. And uh, that, that had to do with their consensus messaging being counted as transaction volume. So this is not a new complaint against these types of ecosystems. And I think there is a lot of underhanded sort of use of data or misuse or misrepresentation of data in crypto. And I think with all the attention on crypto that's going to happen in this next bull cycle, as sort of the media hype cycle ramps up, I think that that additional attention is going to have a sort of the tide is going out and everybody gets to see who's actually not wearing the swim trunks in crypto. I think this post from our friend, The Whale, kind of sums up what is going to happen over the next two years and why we don't have really have to worry about people in crypto sleeping on Cardano. This post says, new users follow price. They'll come in by the truckloads next one to two years. That they get to know Cardano is much more important than convincing niche crypto subcultures and all the noise that brings. Just be present, share cool things, support our builders, and enjoy yourselves. I think this is exactly the right advice, and I think all of this is true. We have always had this notion of the island, the pond, and the ocean, and the niche crypto subculture is should not be our target. That is that is the pond. We should be looking to the ocean. It should be the new mainstream coming in who we should try to get to adopt Cardano. And I think now that we're killing off that that last people won't adopt Haskell argument, I think it's going to be pretty hard for anybody to present um, an accurate argument against Cardano that will make sense to somebody coming into crypto for the first time. I mean, they're going to hear all the misinformation and a lot of people will be convinced by misinformation. People will say, you have to, you have to code Cardano dApps in Haskell. So Cardano is no good. And they'll still say that even when it's not true. And a lot of people, some people will be convinced by that. But now the facts will be different. And some someone new coming into crypto who should be, and those people should be our targets, those people will be able to look at the facts about Cardano versus some of its competitors. And Cardano is going to be a very, very compelling case. Additionally, from a selfish, greedy perspective, I'm kind of glad that everybody's sleeping on Cardano because... The whole reason I had to go back to the fiat mines was because I wanted to be able to DCA harder into Cardano before what comes next. I knew that this was going to be my last chance to go deep into the dark, dank, filthy fiat mines, <laughs> to do all that work below the surface of the earth and then reemerge with so much more ADA than if I hadn't done that. What's very helpful to me in that endeavor is that everybody's sleeping on Cardano. I don't want for everybody in the EVM world or everybody in the Bitcoin world to realize what's going on over here in Cardano. I would prefer that the new mainstreamers coming in only discover that once we're far into the bull cycle so that I can DCA at lower prices. That's what I want to do. I don't want everybody to know what's going on in Cardano. I want for, I want for there to be an asymmetry of information. One of the reasons why being in Cardano is so attractive to me is because it's very easy to be on the beneficial side of an asymmetry of information about Cardano. If you haven't noticed, most of the people who understand Cardano are they're a certain type of person and there, that's a very different type of person than the average person even in crypto. I think that's wonderful for now because it makes it easier 
to DCA and into Cardano and get more ADA for me to get my little lobster claws on more and more ADA. Here's something else that people are still sleeping on super hard. This demographic collapse thing, this demographic spiral, the loss of population in some of the most advanced economies in the world is going to be a really big deal. This post says, and so it begins. What a shame. You know, we can agree or disagree with that sentiment. But what does seem to be the truth is that countries are starting to consider things that would have been perceived in a wildly different manner only a few years ago. Here we see this headline, Japan to admit 820,000 foreigners in transportation logistics sectors eases current regulations. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of this kind of thing. Countries are going to be considering wild things that maybe they would have been much more reluctant to consider in the past because the effects of this demographic collapse, the loss of population in a lot of these advanced economies, everybody around the world is starting to realize that this is going to be a really big deal. This might be the biggest thing. And now with AI and robotics, we can argue maybe it doesn't matter as much because AI is going to be taking care of so much of the non-physical labor and AI, you know, directed robotics, maybe taking care of, you know, uh, some gigantic portion of the physical labor. So maybe humans don't even matter to an economy anymore. People are debating what uh, notions like GDP will even mean if there is this, this idea of an unlimited labor provided by AI and robotics. All that is yet to be seen. But right now, what countries around the world are dealing with is a demographic collapse. They know they're not going to have enough people to have any chance for their economies to continue to grow. And this is disastrous. So we're going to see some countries, we're going to see a lot of countries starting to do wild things that would have seemed impossible in the past. Even your boy, Chairman Ryan, knows that that may be his only help, his, his only hope to deal with demographic collapse. This post says, China's president has called for the mass production of humanoids by 2025. When will the U.S. make a similar announcement? And there is Chairman Ryan himself. Looks like he is inspecting a robot. And it looks like 60 minutes. Could there possibly be any more legacy member of the legacy me media than 60 minutes? Do they have a single anchor anymore who wasn't around for World War II? I don't know. I don't know. Here's another sign of how far along Cardano is. One of our biggest competitors, okay, let's face it, our biggest competitor can't even decide what their issuance rate should be. They can't even decide how fast to inflate their monetary base. This article says why the Ethereum community is up in arms against a proposal to change the monetary policy. Ethereum researchers claim that a high staking ratio is bad for the network as well as for ETH as an asset. They're proposing a solution, but is it worth the cost? It says... Ethereum Foundation researchers Ansgar Dietrich and Kasper Schwartz-Schilling have introduced a proposal to tweak Ethereum's issuance policy to maintain a balanced staking ratio, aiming to prevent potential negative effects such as inflationary pressures on non-stakers and centralization risks. As Ethereum sees an upward trend in ETH staking, projections suggest this could lead to a majority of ETH being locked in staking contracts. However, this solution has sparked a contentious debate within the Ethereum community with some members voicing strong opposition. This person tweeted, It almost seems like a coordinated attack on Ethereum that a few people are suggesting adjusting the ETH issuance curve again and changing the monetary policy when the SEC currently has Ethereum under a microscope. So... All, this person is probably correct, right? If you're having debates about changing how quickly you're going to issue your digital asset, that may have an impact on the SEC's arguments that your digital asset is a security. But more importantly, though, this shows that there are still fundamental questions that have to be answered by 
some very well-developed ecosystems. In fact, Ethereum, sort of our second largest, second most well-known, second biggest, second most notable uh, crypto ecosystem, they don't even know how fast they should be issuing the coins. And they don't have a Voltaire on their roadmap. They don't have real decentralized governance. So when the SEC comes along, they're going to start asking questions like, oh, you guys are changing your issuance rate? Who makes that decision? And it's going to be an indicator of a lack of decentralization if they have to give them the answer to that question. We talked earlier about Haskell. This was kind of an interesting post related to Haskell. You might remember that we we talked about some of the autonomous weapon systems that were being created by Anduril Industries. This is a new platform of theirs for electromagnetic magnetic warfare. And apparently somebody involved with this project over at Anduril mentioned that this was 100% powered by Haskell. Someone said, genuine question, but why? What advantages do you get? His answer, I have zero tolerance for bugs. Interestingly, someone else brought up Cardano in another part of the thread, and he mentioned that he was very thankful for all of the work that IOHK had open sourced and that they use a lot of it at Anduril. So why does Cardano use Haskell? Because when you're building mission critical code that can't have bugs, that's when you use Haskell. Finally, I never thought I would see the presidential election where an actual relevant candidate would be endorsed by anybody in Cardano, and that relevant candidate would actually care. But apparently, this is that election. So, Charles endorsed RFK Jr. for good reason, I think. He's the candidate who seems to be the most pro-crypto by far, in my opinion, at least. He seems to be the most pro-crypto by far. Sure, at least one of the other candidates actually sold some NFTs, but I would say that this candidate is actually by far the most pro-crypto. And RFK Jr. Actually, actually saw and appreciates the endorsement. He wrote, Crypto Guru and Cardano co-founder Charles Hoskinson endorses RFK Jr. saying he's the best person to back this November. So this is kind of an incredible moment. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if a lot of people paid attention to this, but we've got an actual candidate who matters in the election, who's endorsed by someone in our ecosystem, and they actually cared enough about it to post about it. I mean, this this post by RFK Jr. got 663, almost 664,000 views. That's good advertising for Cardano. I don't know what RFK Jr.'s actual chances are in this election, but I like this kind of thing going on nonetheless. I hope you're having a great week, and I'll talk to you soon.